Hello everyone, this is Jamshid Rahimi. Welcome to Food Plus Science. Food Plus Science is a platform where I'm talking about the science and engineering aspects behind food development, design and processing in the food industry. If interested in learning about how the food industry can benefit from the knowledge discovered and generated by academia, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Food Plus Science, to see various talks that I will have on these uh, subjects. Today's session is microwave assisted thermal processing in which I will briefly explain the fundamentals of microwave engineering, how microwaves generate heat and how this technology can help the food industry produce high quality, safe and ready to eat shelf stable foods. I hope you enjoy it. Before I start talking about the fundamentals of microwave heating, I would like to share uh, some statistics that uh, I found on the US Food and Drug Administration webpage, the, the FDA webpage. If you look at that, uh, this page, you will see something that is somehow terrifying. It says that every year about 48 million people in the United States get sick from a foodborne disease. That's about one in each six Americans. 128,000 are hospitalized and 3,000 die each year. This is a significant public health concern, but something that can be prevented. And that's where we see the FDA Food Safety Modernization Act, the FSMA, that is asking to transform the nation's food safety system by shifting the focus from responding to foodborne illness to preventing it. Simply saying the, the FSMA Act is asking the food industry to produce a food that is safe to consume, ready to eat, where uh, a consumer, when a consumer purchases that, that consumer doesn't need to worry about uh, killing the microbes by heating and ready to eat ready to consume food is uh, something that FDA act the FSMA act is asking um, to prevent the uh, huge uh, number of people that globally get sick from uh, foodborne diseases and uh, it is in addition to to health concern it also has a great impact on the economy so for that reason as I mentioned uh, FDA has recommended finding a way to produce a safe food in the industry but as you know making a safe food means clean microbes or esterization and applying heat uh, which normally destroys the quality and nutritional values of food so it's not that easy but something doable. Similar to uh, the United States, we have in Canada the Safe Food for Canadian Act that again similarly uh, is acting the, the supply ch uh, chain in the food industry to produce a food that when people buy it, they can trust and they can consume it in terms of safety. Why I'm talking about microwave today is actually because I believe uh, and if you look into the literature you will see that this technology is a technology that can help us achieve this goal producing a safe food despite a certain misunderstanding in the general public about possible adverse effects of microwave heating on food nutrients and the health related concerns that normally people have microwave ovens have been increasingly used both in homes and uh, at the industrial levels. Um, in the U United States, for example, we have microwave uh, heating um, at homes. This, the third most popular heating method after baking and grilling. We see the same trends in the industry uh, where the food manufacturers uh, produce wide varieties of microwavable foods those that are shelf stable refrigerated or frozen and you can easily find them in the retail stores uh, 
they can also be uh, used uh, again in the industrial level to, to reduce waste, uh, to increase throughputs, improve the food safety, as I mentioned, and it's the topic of uh, our talk today. Uh, more advantages of the microwave, uh, I would talk about uh, having a cleaner work environment, reducing the use of uh, plant space or shortening uh, processing time. These are all advantages and many more uh, if we want to go uh, and name them uh, that are making microwave heating uh, continue being used, continue to, to grow. Uh, in summary, in the food industry, we will see that uh, microwaves are applied for drying, for pasteurization, esterization, thawing, tempering, uh, and baking of the food materials. Um, and it has its own uh, popularity, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, because of its uh, high heating rates that helps in reducing the cooking time, making a more uniform uh, heating pattern. I'll talk about that uh, Soon, when I say more uniform heating, it's actually comparing to the traditional ways of heating. Uh, to it has a, um, safer handling, uh, easier operation, and it needs uh, low maintenance. And it uh, doesn't impact the flavor and nutritional values of food uh, compared to conventional uh, heating methods. Uh, if we ask ourselves what um, microwaves are, uh, we need to look at the uh, electromagnetic spectrum uh, because microwaves are electromagnetic waves. So if you look at that spectrum, we would find that microwaves are somewhere between radio and infrared uh, frequencies. Uh, in terms of uh, wavelengths, uh, they, they are around uh, 0 0.01 meters. They have a wavelength of close to 0 0.001 or, or around it and their frequency is uh, between 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz uh, uh, they are classified the microwaves uh, are uh, classified as radiation without uh, ionizing uh, and that helps us to di distinguish uh, microwaves from other forms of radiation such as X-rays and uh, gamma rays. Uh, X and gamma rays um, are the ionizing radi uh, radiation techniques and that's because they form positively and negatively charged atoms or molecules but we don't have to worry about microwaves because they, uh, they don't uh, uh, produce, uh, they, they don't ionize. Uh, despite the large range of uh, microwave frequencies that uh, we have as I mentioned 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz but um, their use uh, for foods is very limited to only two narrow ranges of microwaves one around uh, 915 megahertz and the other one is uh, around 2.45 gigahertz uh, in domestic applicant, uh, we, we will see 2.45 gigahertz, and for industrial systems, uh, we have both 915 megahertz and 2.45 gigahertz. And the reason for this limited uh, range of frequencies uh, uh, is uh, because uh, microwaves normally interfere with uh, in, uh, with communication systems uh, and, and and they overlap the radar range. Uh, uh, so for this reason, uh, the use of certain microwave frequencies uh, comes under regulation of the government agencies. As an example, we will see that in the United States, uh, the, the use of microwave radiation is regulated by the uh, Federal Communication System, sorry, Federal Communication Commission, and they uh, they allow only uh, 2450 plus minus uh, mega, uh, megahertz and 915 plus minus 25 uh, and globally speaking again uh, the International Telecommunication Union uh, has limited the use of microwave applications uh, in uh, for the foods to these two narrow ranges as I mentioned again because uh, they interfere with the radio frequencies radar ranges and they don't they don't want to uh, uh, use uh, application of microwaves uh, for foods 
um, interfere the communication system. Uh, the next question that uh, we may need to answer uh, is how microwaves uh, generate heat. Uh, microwave heating is caused by the ability of the materials to absorb microwave energy and convert that energy into heat. Microwave heating of food materials uh, mainly actually occurs due to the uh, dipolar and uh, ionic uh, mechanisms uh, which means the presence of water for example uh, in food as we know food is made of water so the presence of the water causes dielectric heating uh, due to its uh, dipolar nature when we apply uh, microwave uh, radiation to food the oscillating electric field when it happens on the water molecules the permanently uh, polarized uh, dipolar molecules try to realign themselves in the direction of the electric field then due to the very high frequency that the electric fields have this realignment occurs at a million times uh, per second and causes internal friction of molecules resulting in the volumetric heating of uh, the material the here food materials uh, ionic conduction or uh, ionic drifting is another important microwave heating mechanism here uh, which means when ionic solutions like uh, salt in water a, a water that has salt is exposed to a microwave field uh, the ions are ob obliged to follow first in one direction and then in the opposite with the rapidly altering field uh, the, the electric field that is oscillating as cha and changing rapidly so the the ions uh, try to realign uh, themselves to that uh, uh, direction of uh, the radiation and the it results in the collision between ions uh, and also ions and other molecules. So it it uh, causes the conversion of kinetic energy of the moving ions into the thermal energy. And if you prepare a solution with high concentration of ions, you would see that uh, it uh, when you microwave that it uh, generates more heat than when the the solution of the ions is less. Uh, I would like to talk uh, briefly about these slides. I have made this slide to just show you what happens when a microwave uh, incident happens on the surface of uh, food. When microwave uh, propagate from air to food materials, a portion of the waves, as you see here uh, under the top right side of this slide, is reflected. Uh, However, the rest of the waves uh, enters the foods here, the refracted waves. So the, the waves that penetrate the food, they, they enter the food, their direction uh, differs inside the food from the original uh, direction. And that's why we call them somehow, we call them the refracted waves. So we have reflected waves and we have refracted waves when we have uh, microwaves uh, uh, incident on the surface of the food. Remember these two terms, uh, we will need them when we are talking about uh, a microwave, uh, fundamentals of microwave heating. One more time, let's uh, review um, these two uh, frequencies of microwave that we have for foods. One was 915 megahertz, megahertz and the other one was uh, 2450. If we compare them, uh, 915 penetrates deeper than uh, the other one. It has more uniform heating and it generates, it helps in generating single mode cavities that could uh, provide predictable electromagnetic fields resulting in predictable and reproducible heat pattern heating pattern that's for 915 and it is very important i will in the rest of this uh, talk today i will talk about uh, what is single mode cavity and uh, how it uh, helps in generating the uniform heating pattern but keep in mind that 
for the food industry to design a microwave process, microwave baking or heating process, it is super important to have a predictable electromagnetic uh, field, a reproducible heating pattern. That's important because if we cannot have that, uh, it's not easy to develop the process for uh, for food uh, baking or heating. 2450 megahertz. Uh, uh, it is uh, its uh, penetration depth is smaller than uh, 915. It causes uh, multi-mode cavities, and these multi-mode cavities uh, result in non-uniform and unpredictable heating pattern. So these two, uh, this conversion uh, between 915 and 2450 megahertz uh, of microwave uh, frequencies, mm, remember them. We will need them uh, in the rest of this presentation today uh, a simple microwave system consists uh, of uh, four main components uh, a magnetron as you see here uh, a magnetron that uh, converts electric energy to microwave energy a waveguide uh, that leads microwaves from the magnetron to the cavity so Magnetron involved one, wave kite, the other one. Then we have the cavity where we put our food in. And finally, a panel where we control the, the microwave uh, process. So these four uh, components are the main one for any uh, microwave uh, system. A magnetron, wave guide, uh, the cavity, and also the, the panel. We will need uh, them again when we are going through the presentation today. Before I go and talk about uh, single and multi-mode cavities, I need to uh, explain what are standing waves. <clears throat> when microwaves leave the source of the, the energy, as I mentioned here, the magnetrons, they reflect at the metal wall and then travel in the opposite direction. So, Imagine a microwave is leaving magnetron, hits the, the metal wall and then reflects back to the opposite direction with the same wavelength and frequency as when it's uh, incident, uh, when, it, when it leaves the magnetron. When the waves are superimposed, their energies are either added together or cancelled out. As you see here, like the uh, green and blue waves here if you imagine there are some points where their string is added to the other one and uh, you you can see that in the right the red one so if somewhere you see them are going higher that means they're added and you see somewhere where those dots that is where they they cancel out the, their strength this slide might show it more clear uh, the location at which the absolute value of the amplitude is minimum are called, those locations are called uh, knots. Like you see these uh, red dots, we call them knots. Those locations where these values are maximum, we call them anti knots. So we have, when we have Again, uh, microwaves leaving the magnetron, hitting the, uh, the wall and then are uh, drifted back into the opposite direction. So we have multiple waves going that way. So we have interaction of the waves and these waves either cancel out their uh, strengths at somewhere where uh, we call them knots or they sum up and they go to a maximum strength of uh, amplitude we, we call them anti knots so this kind of waves are called the uh, standing waves waves they have zero strings at the wall at the microwave wall and they have maximum strengths and minimum strengths on different parts of the waves uh, in the microwave in the cavity so those again where those that have maximum strengths we call them anti knots and uh, those, uh, the places, the spots that they have the minimum strength, we call them uh, knots. 
Uh, now, if we look at a microwave chamber, uh, chamber as it has six walls, uh, we can see that uh, uh, a complex three-dimensional standing waves can be formed in a microwave cavity because of the re reflection of microwaves off the wall. So we have three dimensions, and each dimension, each dimension has multiple waves that are generating the, these standing waves. So this system will be very complicated uh, uh, when uh, we, we have them in multi-dimension or like we call them uh, when we have in multi-mode uh, activities uh, like what we see in uh, dom uh, domestic microwaves uh, look at this uh, microwave on the left side uh, that's a picture of let's say uh, a, a domestic or a home microwave so in this type of microwaves, we have um, the, uh, the dimensions of the cavities, all dimensions, similar or uh, longer than the wavelengths of the microwaves. Again, when we have a microwave cavity where all dimensions of our, uh, that microwave are similar to or larger than the wavelengths of the microwaves, we will have several standing waves pattern form at the same time simultaneously several standing waves are formed and we call this type of cavities multi-mode cavities because a number of standing waves a big number of standing waves are generated that's why we call them multi-mode cavities uh, figure uh, on the right side is uh, an example of uh, the pattern in a domestic microwave uh, oven. Uh, uh, the location of the uh, high and low microwave field zones uh, created by superimposed multiple uh, standing wave pa pattern uh, in this uh, microwave, this type of uh, microwave, uh, depend on the cavity dimension the entry port of the microwave, what else, the, the frequency spectrum of the microwaves from the magnetron, the geometry, the dimension, the, the dielectric properties and location of the foot event. Uh, uh, in addition to that, the, the peak frequency of a microwave generator also changes uh, with the age and uh, power setting of that microwave. More, uh, more than that, the, the peak frequency changes with the size and location of the food in cavity. You see, there are multiple factors impacting the, uh, uh, the pattern of the heat generation in a, a microwave when it has a multi-mode cavities. So it's extremely difficult to predict uh, and control microwave standing uh, wave patterns in a multi-mode microwave activity. As I mentioned earlier, uh, it is important to be able to predict the heat pattern, heat transfer or heat, uh, the generation of uh, heat, the pattern. If it's not uh, easy to predict that, then a food engineer uh, wouldn't be easily able to design the, the microwave process. Uh, I have uh, stolen this uh, this part from uh, the paper published by Patak et al. Uh, in the Journal of Microwave uh, Power and Electromagnetic Energy, which says one of the crucial technical challenges uh, facing engineers and scientists working in the area of microwave heating is the ability to predict heating pattern and to control the amount of energy that is deposited within the heating region. This ability is desirable in the design and operation of food processing systems based on microwave energy. However, predicting the heating pattern, this is important, however, predicting the heating pattern and the energy deposited within a food stuff from microwave heating applicators has proven to be a difficult task due to the complex nature of the interaction mechanisms and governing physics. The large variety of materials and foods, their property, compositions, geometric uh, configuration and processing requirements make the analysis and modeling even more complicated.
that it's 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 very complicated uh, uh, designing a, a or a m microwave process because it's not that easy to predict. There are a lot of factors involved uh, in the design that uh, makes uh, the the design um, very complex. So in summary, uh, the challenges that uh, we have uh, in general for microwave uh, are a lack of uniformity of the electromagnetic field distribution that can be to the equipment itself and food due to the uh, parameters or reasons that I said. It can also, uh, one challenge is uh, the edge overheating effect, uh, which is due to non resonance phenomenon caused by the electric field parallel to the edge of the food. What that means. We have on the uh, the edges of the food we have a high concentration of uh, electric field uh, uh, generated from the microwave and that causes uh, overheating and then burning of the the food uh, edges. The other types of uh, cavities are uh, single mode cavities. When at least one dimension of a microwave cavity is much smaller than the wave wavelengths of the microwaves from the magnetron like what you see here in this picture uh, the this dimension is much smaller than the wavelength uh, of the wave when leaving um, the magnetron and traveling toward the food at scenarios like these it is possible to create a single predictable and stable wave pattern these cavities are called uh, single mode cavities uh, for example, this figure on the, on the right uh, it illustrates the design of a single mode uh, cavity microwaving food. In this design, microwave through a generator is split 50% into each of the sections here that we call them the horns. The, the synchronized waves from the two horns enter the rectangular section to form a standing wave pattern. This single mode cavity is able to provide a stable heating pattern over a reasonable bandwidth applicable to the to industrial 915 MHz generators and for foods of different dielectric uh, properties. If we look back at the multi-mode cavities, how the food is uh, heated, you see in here we have multiple spots of food with different temperatures. We have from very hot to cold temperatures of uh, the spots. It, it's uh, a complex, uh, like we see a complex transfer of heat, like uh, or a pattern, a complex pattern of heat transfer. However, in the single mode cavity, the, the, the heat pattern is not that complex. We still have uh, some spots that are more hot than the other spots, but the complexity is less. For this reason, when we have a single mode cavity, it is uh, easier to predict uh, the heat pattern than when we have a multi mode cavity. In any scenario, single or multi-mode cavity, we may have the overheating of the edges of the food when we only apply microwave. So, as, as I said at the beginning of the presentation, we need to produce a food that is ready to eat and it is safe. So, through thermal processing, we need to kill the bacteria. However, that thermal process may uh, destroy the quality of the food and the goal is to find a way to make that safe food but keep the quality as much as possible what happens uh, is uh, at the Washington State University the scientists used the knowledge that they had about uh, the penetration depth of the 915 megahertz microwave and uh, they also use the knowledge they had about the dielectric properties of water and food. As you know, food is mainly made of water. So the dielectric properties of food and water alone are very close. So they, they use this 
info the knowledge that they had the uh, the, uh, the knowledge about single mode cavity, the knowledge about 915 MHz uh, frequencies, the, about how they penetrate into the food. They knew that it, it at the very high temperatures, like 120 degrees Celsius, they, it, the waves can penetrate sometimes as um, as much as 150 uh, millimeters. And they also, again, knew the dielectric properties of water and food. So they used this knowledge to develop a technology a patented technology which in they were able to reduce the reflection and refraction of microwaves at the interface between water and foods they, they put water sorry they put the food in water they microwave the food while it was in the water and they they were they, they reduced the um, reflection and refraction of microwaves at the interface and that way they were able to reduce or even eliminate the edge heating of the food. They, they call this technology microwave assisted uh, thermal processing or depending on what thermal process they aimed, uh, if it was esterilization or pasteurization, they, they are called microwave assisted esterilization system or microwave assisted pasteurization system. What, what it does is actually, it, it's called MATS as well. So MATS, is, uh, it includes the utilization of water as the heating medium in combination with the direct, direct exposure of the food products to the microwaves. By using water as an intermediate step to heat the food products, some of the drawbacks of the microwave technology such as the non-uniformity of heating and edge effects were resolved this way. This, this slide is showing a picture um, of the, uh, the pilot scale pilot plant, uh, uh, sorry, the pilot scale mats that was developed at Washington State University pilot plant. And as you see, uh, it is made of four sections. If, if you look at it from right side, it is first, uh, uh, it, we have the preheating section. Then we, from there, we go to the microwave heating section. After that, the holding section, and finally the, the cooling section. These four sections are arranged in series, representing, uh, so in series, uh, being each uh, after each other. And each section has a separate water circulating system that consists of a pressurized tank and pl plated exchanger to control water flow at a preset temperature. And as you see, the, the microwave heating section uh, has four connected microwave cavities and each of the cavities uh, is connected to a separate uh, corresponding microwave generator. So how it works is we have food coming into the uh, preheating section and that food is uh, surrounded by a water uh, like a, a medium of water that is uh, it has its temperature already preset uh, it warms up and then from there it goes to the microwave heating section from there it goes to the other sections and as i mentioned each section has a uh, water circulating uh, the food why, why the uh, circulating water is important here is if if we think uh, about the conventional processing thermal process that we have such as retort in those type of thermal processing we have packaged foods placed in uh, pressurized cookers uh, at high temperatures for a very long time this prolonged exposure to high heat will kill will destroy the uh, the microbes for sure that's the goal here but at the same time it also destroys the nutrients and also affects the texture and the taste of the food so it doesn't have the, the retort process uh, impacts negatively the quality of the food but in this system when we have water circulating the the food, uh, the, the, the circulating water has three purposes. One, 
It acts as a heat sink uh, to reduce the edge overheating in food during microwave uh, process. Two, it maintains the temperature of the food uh, once it reaches the sterilization or the depasterization temperature, depending on what we want to do. And three, it acts as a, as a matching medium, resulting in a relatively even power deposition profile over the surface of the food. In simple words, this water that is circulating the, the food doesn't let overheating happen because the temperature is set to what we want and the, it removes if the temperature of the food is going high, very high, this water removes that high temperature and it keeps the temperature of the food at, the, uh, at what we want. Here we again see uh, another picture of uh, the, uh, the mat system. But this time the food comes in from the left side. It goes to the uh, uh, pre-warm zone, uh, the hot water zone. And after that, we have holding zone, microwave. In the other one, we had microwave before holding. But here we have first holding zone, then microwave zone. And finally, uh, we have the, the cooling zone. Something to remember here is that foods need to be packaged, either in pouches, in cans, in in packaging that doesn't let direct uh, contact between the, the, the water that is surrounding the food and food itself. So it is important uh, to remember that uh, the packaging uh, materials must be suitable for this, uh, this purpose. Flexibility, transparency, in some cases uh, heating efficiency and microwave penetrability are some consideration uh, for choosing the, the right uh, packaging materials. And uh, if we want to develop a technology like that for our uh, processing lines, uh, we need to make sure that the, the materials, uh, the packaging materials are validated. In this slide, uh, I'm trying to show how the heat transfer, um, how the distribution of the actually heat in the food uh, uh, differ when we uh, use microwave assisted thermal processing compared to when we don't use any of these uh, two components of maths. In maths we have microwave and water so once we check what happens if we don't have the microwave and one more time we will look at what happens if there is no water uh, surrounding the food. Uh, this this picture on the, the uh, left side compares uh, the temperature of the different spots of uh, a food model, a tray of food, let's say, uh, when that food goes through through maps, and the other time when there is no microwave, it just passes through hot water. If you look at hot water tray here, as you see, we have on the edge very hot spot and right in the center we have the, the cold spot however microwave assisted thermal process here helps in changing the hot spots removing it from the the edges bringing it back a little more toward the center and also removes the cold water from the center the one on the, uh, the right side better explains what i want to say uh, as you see here, the, the top line is when we have food passing through the four cavities of microwave assisted thermal processing and at the same time we have water circulating around the food. With heat diff diffusion means we have water circulating. The bottom line has is the food that goes through the four cavities but we don't have water circulating. We, we, without heat diffusion. If you look at the one without heat diffusion, at cavity 4, when food is leaving the cavity number 4, we see that we have spots in the food that is super hot. Temperature goes as high as 160 degrees Celsius and we also have some spots that temperature is not that high. It's around 72 degrees Celsius. So two points from this line. One is we have very hot spots and the other point is that the difference between cold and hot, hot spots here is uh, the, the temperature difference is very high. 
But when we have water so surrounding around the food, uh, uh, circulating around the food, the first point is the hot spot is not that hot anymore. It's, it's not 160. Maybe it's somewhere here. But we also don't have the the cold spots. You, you see, like these red and the green will line, uh, like will sit somewhere here. So the the difference in temperature is not that much high. That means that we have a more uniform heat uh, distribution through the food, and that's what we wanted to do. A better uh, heat distribution why because that would help us to keep the the quality of the food it helps in reducing uh, edge heating effect it helps us to have a more uniform heating pattern and the system help us to have a predictable heating patterns there it's not any more unpredictable and that's what the goal is uh, microwave the goal of microwave assisted thermal processing is it helps in producing a much better quality ready to eat uh, food uh, while it is, it is safe well, we can kill the microbes but at the same time don't destroy the, the quality of the food as uh, how we have in uh, the traditional uh, thermal processes like when you use we, we, we use retorts the literature has literature have shown that uh, we can keep uh, the, the freshness of the food much better than uh, other techniques we will have less shrinkage for example if carrot is uh, processed that carrot doesn't shrink much and texture taste and flavor of the food is uh, kept uh, much better during the process after the process during the storage the, the quality in all these steps are uh, uh, is better than when the food is uh, thermally processed uh, through the traditional ways so take home message from this slide is that the thermal process here has less negative impact on the quality of the food uh, for this slide if we review one more time the advantages uh, as as you see here uh, Matt has uh, both batch and continuous modes of processing. It helps us reduce processing time to one fourth uh, to one tenth. It has a higher throughput. Uh, uh, we have less operational cost, better appearance, and the, the, the technology uh, delivers a food that has better sensory characteristics. The last but uh, important point about um, this technology this novel technology is that also microwave assisted thermal processing can be a viable processing option for companies uh, to stay in compliance with the new fsma rules which was to produce a safe food uh, in the shelf the retailer but at the same time high quality Large food companies are typically slow in adapting new food processing technologies. So this technology and any, any other new technologies uh, are not easy to, to use in the large uh, companies because they, they are already established and the infrastructure, the, the plant layout, the, the machinery, the equipment, everything has been already established. So if they want to adapt to this new technology, it takes time and it may uh, disrupt their existing food production and uh, distribution systems. Therefore, it is more likely that we have small and medium sized companies or uh, new startups that like to use this technology. It would be easier for them to use the technology than uh, the, the companies that are already well established and are very big. Uh, I, I use the references that you see here uh, for my talk today. Uh, you can go and check these references if you are interested in learning more about this technology, uh, reviewing more details. There are also many, many more uh, uh, papers, publications online that you can review. 
with very good you know, uh, amount of information about the technology. I hope uh, you enjoyed the, the talk today. Uh, for for next talk, I'm thinking of uh, having a presentation on uh, precision fermentation and uh, seeing how these uh, uh, this the, fer the fermentation uh, can help us uh, add value to food industry byproducts. We all know that the the food industry, the, the agriculture in general, has a lot of uh, waste, a lot of byproducts that. Uh, uh, we can value add and bring them back to the supply chain, food supply chain. So uh, I'm reviewing the technologies, uh, fermentation technology and methods uh, to see how we can apply this technology to value add to the, those uh, byproducts. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Food Plus Science, to see more uh, talks in the food industry. Uh, as I mentioned, my talks would be more uh, like scientific and engineering aspects of uh, fo food uh, processing. I would be happy to have you subscribe to my YouTube challenge and also please connect with me on my LinkedIn page. Uh, contact me, share with me your uh, feedback, comments, any suggestion that you have that can help me uh, improve my food plus science talks uh, i hope you enjoyed uh, today's talk i'll talk to you soon have fun